So welcome to our under 13 schools cup for girls finally at St Peter's Roman Catholic School from Solihull. And uh, this is the team, John Holland, Butler, Enright, McLaughlin, the captain, McGrath, Brown, Stevenson, Farmer, Summer and Ashcroft. Ian McMahon is the manager. And Bohunt School, Workingham, just down the road from here. And it's Will, Leonard, Harris, Jolif, McKeever, Thompson, Stedman, Harris, Glover and Chandler. We have Mr. A. Campbell is the manager. So just a little bit late there. Better late than never, as they say. Uh, St. Peter's don't have any substitutes listed. Well, they are down to core 11. So um, they have two substitutes, obviously, because the team list showing 11 players. But we also have uh, Glover McKenzie, Scar uh, sorry, Mackenzie Glover, Scarlett Chandler, and Rebecca Brown. Liam White is our referee. And uh, first girls final of the competition, uh, John Scales is with me. Former Liverpool, Wimbledon, Tottenham, Bristol Rovers. I say it in a different order every time. I should do it in the uh, correct order. In Bristol Rovers. Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Well, you can go back and start <laughs> with Leeds. Leeds, Bristol Rovers, Wimbledon, Liverpool, Tottenham, Ipswich. Home. <laughs> Feet up. Feet up, yes. I keep missing Ipswich out. A friend of mine's an Ipswich fan, so she'd be hating me. You didn't miss much. <laughs> Those were the fallow years, were they? It was, uh yeah. <laughs> they were getting more and more fallow as time <laughs> went by, yeah. <laughs> so we've got the... I love girls' football. I really... And this is promising to be a good match. There's two real top teams here going head-to-head. Um, I was actually, uh, I, I actually know somebody on the Solihull team, I was having a chat with them and uh, they've got no idea what they're going to expect here. Um, they've demolished everybody in their local area and now they're going to come up against a team who's demolished everybody in their local area and it's going to be one of those, let's see what happens. And uh, working them get away with a very direct route, that was almost Wimbledon style straight away wasn't it? Straight from a kick off. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's a poor throw out, and here's a chance. Oh, that was so close. Oh. And that could have been a goal after f only 15 seconds. And I think uh, goalkeeper, Abby John, from St. Peter's, may just uh, think about her. Here we go. Well, she'll, she'll, think, she'll think from now on, that's a wake-up call, because Mia Thompson gets onto it. Oh, it's a really loose oh, yeah. throw out, isn't it? That's not going to happen again. No, no. Because that's whistle past the post. I mean, inches from conceding a goal inside the first 30 seconds would have been a disaster for her. Well, Captain uh, Livy McLaughlin probably had a little word there. She's uh, she's taken that goal kick, and that's a very strong tackle there. She gets a little knock early on as well. Yeah, Molly McKeever trying to get in there really quickly, brightly. So nine aside, um, under 13s. Substitutes, uh, St. Peter's. Uh, looks as if we've got the two two substitutes in their crew, and that uh, looks like we've got five substitutes. Uh, sorry, three substitutes from Bohunt School. There's a, a bit of action. Olivia Brown on the right hand side. That's a good cross in. And looking not to find anybody. McLaughlin heads that one off. She's tackled well, covered by her teammates, and now Beth Stevenson. And a bit of a tussle there with uh, Molly McKeever, the captain for working uh, for Bohunt. I do apologise for being a little bit late there, John. I was trying to uh, well, I was get a bite to eat, and I was <laughs> there's no plates. To the coffee, uh, the coffee is no milk. I was waiting for milk. <laughs> <laughs> and there is McLaughlin who's uh, well considering she's the centre half and she's just making a marauding run upfield there. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I think she's she's shown great endeavour in the uh, I know we're only a couple of minutes into the game, but uh, she's already one I've just sort of picked out or yeah. been drawn to that has got great energy. Yeah, that was noticeable, wasn't it? Centre half just suddenly goes, Oh right, I'm gonna go up front and have a little go here. A couple of coach loads have coming from Solihull. They are uh, very much the away team here, I suppose, in uh, one sense of the word, although not on the scoreboard. There's a throw in from McLaughlin, and the ball's bouncing around. Farmer trying to get on the end of that. And uh, that was uh, Neve Holland. 
just uh, putting her hands to her head there, having a half chance. There's the, the yeah. throw from Olivia McLaughlin, and, and this was a half opportunity here, and it just broke out. And yeah, it ricocheted. She had to get across the ball and drive it to the far post. Your reaction has got to be always hitting across the goal, you know, and you've just got to have that sort of slight bit of composure. Um, but it was in a flash that it happened. Got to go back to the keeper. Yeah, that's a trip. Oh. Tri interesting. While she decided to take a risk and turn, but here comes uh, Stevenson again. Uh, sorry, Farmer Framer. I called her Farmer earlier. It's Framer. I do apologise. And that was interesting. And it didn't seem to be very happy wanting to pass the ball back there. That was that was a pass the ball back to the keeper every day of the week. Mm. You're the opposition coach. You uh, yeah, will have noticed that, and uh, try and uh, put a bit more pressure on the defence over the top. Well defended. Oh, good skills there from number six, Molly McKeever, the captain, and uh, Olivia McLaughlin, the other captain, was trying to get hold of her, but McKeever a little bit too fast on that occasion. Bohunt uh, with three, three at the back still, so they're not pushing players forward. That will be a corner. Corner, yeah. Little touch. So first corner here in this under 13 schools cup for girls. That's a dangerous cross, and it was a frame that managed to clear that out. And here comes McLaughlin from nowhere. She's the centre half, and she's making a marauding run down the right hand side. Well, well I don't think I ever saw you do runs like that, John, in your time. Well, I think to be fair, she's playing in sort of a role in front of the back three. I'm sure, she's uh, the centre half, but uh, certainly playing a defensive holding midfield role, as I thought, but yeah. that's quickly been dispelled with the way that she has marauded twice yeah. down this right hand side. Yes, yeah, you're right. She's Making not the defence, isn't she? She is that sort of defensive midfield, but then is getting stuck in very quickly yeah. whenever there's a chance. And yeah. uh, you say it's actually the number eight who's defense so yeah maybe I've been tricked by the numbers here the number eight is definitely playing at the back and number five is more of a midfield so uh, maybe I shouldn't get too excited Good skills. isn't it chance there uh, the ball just couldn't be played through right. goalkeeper's going to come and clear this out straight away good opening here both teams really uh, getting stuck in referee says he's happy with that McLaughlin Strong challenge from Thompson. And Bohunt just clear the ball. So, uh, John, you've been in football a lot. You know, I remember when I was very young and girls football was almost sort of looked down on and it was almost like an underground sport mm. at one stage mm. and the FA wouldn't recognise girls football or anything. And here we are. I'm looking at the past results of St. Peter's schools. They've played eight rounds of matches to get here. Yeah. How wonderful is that? Just yeah. that there's so many teams. You know, this is 256 to 512 teams have played in this competition. Yeah, I mean, maybe I've got complacent. I just I, I got s so used to uh, the, the girls' game now, and the women's game and the professionalism of it, the way that so many players play. It doesn't really surprise me that we've had that many teams, uh, but I think it will surprise a lot of people still just how far girls' football has come been you know, something I've really enjoyed watching for a long time now. Yeah. And I know the participation just com continues to soar and soar. And well, it's, and it's been wonderful to see how girls' football really has progressed. And yeah. you know, from England doing so well in the World Cup just a few years ago, uh, participation levels have just gone up and up. Yeah. And the fact I'm looking at a sheet here with eight rounds of matches. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, the sheer numbers now. Schools are saying we've got to have girls' football. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's wonderful. Right, to so see. it's just it's just a great sport to play. I mean, it's funny because I you know I've got two daughters, nine and eleven, and they're not playing football, and, I, and so often I wish they were. I mean, I can't fit it into their ag sports agenda and dance and athletics, and they're taking that seriously. So there isn't sort of time. But as a sport for girls to develop, I, I think this is one of the greatest sports they can play because uh, not to disparage you know netball or rounders or maybe cricket. I think that football, there's nothing like football that gets everybody involved, that has the dynamic movement, the tackling, the competitive nature, the collective 
spirit and teamwork that you need. Everything about it is perfect for girls and boys. It's a great sport. Yeah. And I'm, maybe I'm biased because I, I, I play football, but I'm, I'm trying not to be because I love sport. I love my athletics, but it's... Um, I wish my girls would because of the way that it helps with coordination, with yeah. movement, with fitness, with strength, with everything. Um, and even at a basic level, there's just a social aspect of it that you're playing in a team. It and yeah. And, and I think yeah. that's often uh, under overlooked. Well, that's the beauty of team sports, full stop, isn't it? Um, but I think this has got a bit of everything, whereas the others, the, some of the other girls' sports, the netball, the, the rounders, the doesn't really have that dynamic edge that girls want nowadays. They want to be competitive. There's a chance here, a chase for the ball. Um, St. Peter's are playing a, playing a very high line. They're taking a, a, a sort of risky approach, and I think they're coming up against a team with Bohan that like to play a longer ball from the back. Well, it's interesting because they're doing brilliantly. They're holding a high line, and it's a very disciplined line, and they're actually holding out very, very well. Now, can they last the entire game? I'm not so sure, yeah. uh, but so certainly as a tactic, it does make the game compact yeah. from St. Peter's point of view. So when they gain the ball back, they're close to each other. Yeah. Um, Whereas well, Bohut are, are very happy to be, you know, sort of almost have a line just in front of the 18-yard box. They're not really pushing up. No. You see here, they don't push up at all. No. Not a single step. And uh, it is an interesting. Uh, Clash of Stars, oh, football such a wonderful game. Just going to go through the results here. St. Peter's in round one, they had an 11-1 away victory against St. John's uh, Church of England Foundation Middle School. Right, number five, we mentioned earlier, Oliver McLaughlin scored eight goals. Oh, oh in one what, game. What Sorry, I thought this was on the route to the you, final. You get the match ball, the kit, the, the, the <laughs> team coach. <laughs> what, what do you get to take home for scoring eight in a match? Like eight out of 11. Probably assisted the other three. Um, okay, so actually it's interesting. She's a standout player. They had a 1 0 win in the second round against Bishop Chaloner. McLaughlin scored that one. In round three, it was a 2 1 win against St. Peter's. Guess who scored both goals? In round four, it was a 3 0 win against St. Peter's Roman Catholic School. Three and McLaughlin scored all three again. So surprise, surprise. Um, in round five, <laughs> this goes on. Oh right, my God. Now I think there's an error here. This can't be St. Peter's. Uh, sorry, against Thomas Tell. Oh, hold on a second. We'll just. There's a chance here, and that's beautifully saved. That was a real opportunity for Bohun, and there's a shot from distance just over the bar. Sorry, I'm slightly misreading this. Of course, we're talking about St. Peter. So, a 2-1 win against Sandwell Academy in round three. In round four, it was Mel Bet I can't even say yeah, that. Freya right. Harris gets on the end of this ball really, really well. One, two, there, the touch away. Brilliant. She does everything right, everything she needs to do. Hits it at the keeper. Yeah, just the Either last. side, and it would have been the opener. Um, in round five, it was a 2-1 win against Thomas Telford, McLaughlin scoring both. Round six, it was a 3-0 win against Bishop Haber High School. I don't think I've ever read a sheet like this. McLaughlin scored three, all three goals. In round seven, it was a 5-3 win against Weatherhead High School. She only scored four of the five that time. Oh, did she? And then Off day. in round eight, the semi-final, they beat the, the National Church of England Academy, 4-1. She only scored three of the four. So I, can't, I don't think I've ever seen... She scored 26 out of the 31 goals. That's a phenomenal record. Oh, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. From midfield. I mean, you're entitled to be the captain after that, aren't you? <laughs> no, we'll do, yeah, she's earned the captain's armband, and she takes the goal kicks, just for good measure. Um, fascinating. Is. And uh, there she is on the ball. And here she is, Lovely. yeah, starting to uh, push forward. So uh, she's obviously the main danger, and if you're the, um, if you've done a little bit of homework from Bohunt, you possibly noted her number and said okay she's the one to watch out for but what does what that says is that there isn't really a lot of goals elsewhere no. in the team but a uh, fascinating uh, record there uh, it is remarkable <laughs> it is, quite, I've quite remarkable i don't think i've ever seen such a one-sided uh, score sheet but uh, as for bohunt in their first round they beat the don john medeski academy so they started off here it was an away win 10-0 um, in round two, it was a 4-1 win over High Wycombe School at home. In round three, a 3-2 three win at Westgate School. In round four, it was a 10-0 win over Glenmore and Winton Academies. In round five, a 3-0 away win, Catherine Lady Barclays School. In round six, a 4-1 home win against Ivy Bridge Community College. In round seven, 
a 3-1 home win against Tanbridge House School and in the semi it was a 2-0 home win against Kesgrave School. So 39 goals, top scorer is M Thompson with 14 of them. So she's possibly the, the danger there. Good skill from Neve Holland, not taking on too much. Well, both teams very freely scoring, so we're expecting goals here. Well, they are. It's yeah, I've been a pragmatic approach to the first sort of 15 minutes of this game. Yeah, a couple both of chances. They've been got away, haven't they? Those those front two for yeah. Bohunt, Thompson, and Harris. Interesting to just look. You can't tell on your picture, but the the, the Stedman, over defense always a ball. chance. Oh, and well, keeper does well there because I think she sort of went down a bit early. Um, but look how far back the Bohunt defense is. They're, they're they're halfway in their own half for this goal kick. Yeah, and I don't think that's deliberate. I don't think they're sort of thinking we're going to play deep for an obvious reason. Now, certainly from St Peter's point of view, when you play that high, that's a conscious decision to you know push up and close the game and. I think you've been coached in that way. Yeah. I think from Bohun's point of view. Uh, I mean, possibly, possibly you're thinking to, com to to annul. There she is again on the ball. Yeah. Olivia McLaughlin. You know, maybe to alert, uh, avert the danger. They've actually seen her play, or they've spoken to other schools, and they say, look, she loves to run with the ball. She loves to get free and burst on. And if you push up high, she'll be gone with her, the way she plays the game. So maybe it is a conscious conscious yeah, thing to sit, sit so. deep. Interesting tactic here from the corner. All the players are just bunched around the edge of the box. Ooh, oh, and there she is. Free swing. And uh, she, well, she went. She, it was a brave attempt to go for the, for the volley there. Straight from the corner. Just shows something for her to have the confidence to have a swing at that. Most players have put a foot on it. That's a girl who's scored a lot of goals so far. Coaching bench. There's McLaughlin again, that defensive midfield, and then comes out with the ball, looks to try and play in. Stevenson. Just a bit too far, so that was uh, yeah. Olivia Brown there. She was, just trying to pick out Olivia Brown. I thought Olivia was going to sort of pull off the centre-half shoulder just so that the diagonal ball could come in, and I think that's what they they wanted to do, but Olivia McLaughlin is unable to execute that. Good opening so far. One of the players just tying a shoelace, so just a short delay. Halfway through this first half. No major chance, but here on the break, and here's Bohunt again. Got some pace, and that will be a foul. Well done, referee. Yeah, good refereeing. Absolutely right. Molly Great. Stedman, I think, was it just pulled her back? There's Freya Harris. Freya uh, Harris up broke there, through. Number nine. Yep. And uh, yeah, they're trying that tactic again. You know, that, that's interesting to see that again, it's a. They're trying to play the ball over the top. They're seeing that St. Peter's are playing a high line. And maybe it's a St. Peter's defence. I've got a bit of pace about them. Yeah, it's definitely the right tactic. Look for those uh, those times to get it over the top. Free kick to Bohunt. Major chances so far have gone Bohunt's way. Bit of Solihull support for St. Peter's. And the goalkeeper's not going to come out for this. She's put a bit of pressure on her defenders, and the only option is to put it out for a throw. She'd just taken the, the, the kick, and I think uh, she just hasn't got back oh. into position in time. Well, I like the way that Beth Stevenson is playing in the middle of the three at the back. And obviously then when Olivia McLaughlin takes the goal kick, she goes on and pushes into midfield. It allows Olivia just to push up into the back three. And then very clear exchange. and yeah. So quite well drilled side quite well organised you can see St Peter's there's McLaughlin again having a pulling the trigger from outside the box and that will be a goal kick 
So this is bunch number four. Yeah. Day flies by here, doesn't it? It's great stuff. Oh, I think the referee's just decided that although the linesman gave the corner, the referee said he saw a little flick off an orange shirt and this is corner being given. We have one more match to come, which is uh, Bottersham Village College from Cambridge against Stanley Park High School. Corners into the box, the ball's rolling around. Oh. oh, what a chance. What a chance that was. That's be good to see that from uh, behind, perhaps. St. Peter's nearly, nearly taking the lead here. All right, ricochets around, doesn't get cleared off the shin there, and it falls very nicely. That Gosh, so close. Stevenson. Yeah. That's the free kick given. First major chance there for St. Peter's. distance. Oh. The goalkeeper makes a mess of that. Wasn't sure whether it was at that sort of shoulder height where she wasn't sure whether she'd like cup her hands and catch it or catch it with her hands pointing upwards. Yeah. And in the end she didn't decide either way and it just Or leave it and it was going wide. Yeah, <laughs> it was a funny yeah. one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah let's bl let's blame the defender for not giving her a call. That's okay, superb so support in here, haven't we? All Michael day Bowen. so far. Buckland wins the header. Eve Holland looking for support. McLaughlin's in support. This is the sort of run that she likes to make. We've already seen it a few times. She leaves her opponent trailing, looking for options, not seeing many. Only just to hold up the ball and will win the throw. Don't seem to be many uh, options. It, this, they, they don't seem to really have a wide person at uh, St. Peter's team. Like she was looking wide. To yeah, in fact, you can see that she's saying to her, her right back, you know, I need you to be up there to help. And uh, it's interesting that uh, she really didn't have anybody to play the ball to in that situation. Here's Fo Grace Farm Framer. Back to McLaughlin, who's uh, under extreme pressure straight away. Does well. Plays it out to number 11, who's not actually listed on the team sheet. So I'm sorry, I can't tell you who that is. Always lovely when you get team sheets in that don't... Uh, don't have the numbers on, but okay. Yeah, number eleven is Lucy Ashcroft. So I've got two different team sheets here. I don't know if uh, what happened there, but I've got different numbers on mine from uh, John's. But John's got the correct one, so that was Lucy Ashcroft for number eleven. Both had to get the throw. So far, defence is on top. No major chance either way. A couple of good chances. Bohan probably having the best chance at uh, hitting the goalkeeper from close range. And uh, just ne just a minute or so ago, we saw uh, St. Peter's best chance again from close range, but at an awkward angle. St. Peter's, so here's a chance. Framer losing out on the ball. Now McKeever, the captain, who's really been a, an attractive uh, player for Bohan team. Here comes McLaughlin again. She strides forward into the gap, takes on another. That's a shot. She actually had a couple of players in the box there. A cross may have been better from that angle. Yeah, I mean, that's just, it, it seems difficult to criticise somebody, doesn't it, when they've got such a, had such a season, <laughs> standout yeah. player for so many reasons. She just has got to learn when to release the ball a little bit earlier. Yeah. She's, she's wanting to win this, so desperate to win this game. Uh, that she's just hanging on to the ball a little bit too much in just areas where she needs to release it, but yeah. hey, that's just part of learning the game and developing it. Part of learning, isn't play. it? Yeah. These kids are t you know, 11, 12 years old, so uh, there's a lot of, lot of football uh, learning to be done here. And that will be a goal kick. Well, it is. It's all part, but I mean, look, the, the more that she's doing this, the more touches of the ball she's having, the more she's influencing games and more impact she's having, but um, again, it is. It, it's learning that, that, like I said in a couple of games back, that releasing the ball really quickly, really early, just having one touch, having the awareness of a picture in your head is worth a couple of minutes of brilliant skill, individual yeah. sort of brilliance of taking people on down the line time after time after time. It's, it's the ability to influence with key passes in a game that, that often counts, not how many passes, how much possession, how 
it's it's those key moments uh, that make things happen. That's why they're great tennis players. You know, it's the percentage that they convert their break points so much more than the average player. They're all pretty much on a par of playing a game of tennis. But it's when the pressure's on, it's the winning points and converting them, holding break points when it most matters. Substitute just taken place there. I'm not sure what number's just gone off, but number 10 is on. So Elizabeth Sumner is, is away. And uh, it was Luce, Lucy Ashcroft who, who came off, so we are on that rotating that substitute. There's that, there's that bunch of players there. Interesting tactic. Four of them in a bunch. And need to get the ball into that box, though. So St. Peter's got plenty of players still in and around the central area. Good play from Bohun. Like uh, Freya Harris, she's got some real energy about her there. And here comes McLaughlin. Thompson. Thompson wins the throw. Ellen McGrath did well, didn't she? That tackle down here, she needed to make it. of both these teams. Probably the biggest stage they've ever played on. There's McLaughlin again doing that sort of sprint from outside her own half into the other half, but ball out to the right. Sumner just couldn't get hold of it. The ball hasn't gone out. <laughs> Appeal from Ella McGrath, but uh, McLaughlin plays a 1-2 with Olivia Brown. Two Olivia's going together. That will be a throw for Bohem. Yeah, who's going to make the breakthrough here? It's difficult to call, isn't it? And just yeah. talking about the way the games have gone in the earlier rounds, you can see the tension between the players now has sort of risen a notch, I suppose, given it's nil-nil. I don't think they'd have expected not to have scored at least one goal by this stage of the game. So yeah. interesting, interesting factor to see how they, uh, how they react. Interesting at St. Peter's, you know, they haven't been big goal scores. They did have an 11, but generally it was 1, 2, 3, 2, 3. They had a 5 and a 4 in the quarter. It's a long distance shot. And I think there was a deflection on there. Yeah, it just came on uh, Kira Jolly. You know, at the end of the day, how many, how many goals does she shoot? She's scored 26 goals in eight matches. So <laughs> that's an average of a hat trick a match, which isn't a bad average, is it? And uh, yeah. you know, she is going to want to start pulling the trigger here. And here you see, it is an example. She receives the ball, shrugs off uh, McKeever, and uh, she's a long way out, but she, you know, she's got so much confidence, obviously. Here's a corner. So Peter's still trying the same tactic. They've got players crowded in. This time, a corner is better. There's nobody in that. Uh, Oh, there we go. And yes, that was a foul. Substitute here, number two coming on, Kayla Weir, and that's number eight going off, Molly Stedman. The header. Two more days of matches here. Um, please make sure if you're watching this from uh, Solid Hall or Workingham area, then do send us your school cup selfies. Just uh, you just add a hashtag. I believe Twitter's now. It's all Instagram with the kids, so I think we're a little bit out of date here actually. But uh, we're, we're, we're working on Twitter this year. We might have to change that next Instagram, year. But uh, isn't it now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, send your hashtag hashtag schools cup selfie. If you're in Solihull, Ooh, hey. oh, he's a just broke free. I think the ball there has laid back. Here's an opportunity blocked by Stevenson and cleared by Enright. That was a half chance there for Bohan. It was. Let's see this again. There it is. Freya Harris cuts back in, sets it up. Mia Thompson has the shot blocked. Comes back again to Harris, doesn't it? Ball's back in play. Referee, uh, ball's gone out. So we'll have a throw in. 
I do like uh, Freya Harris. She's uh, got some real energy about her. And she's playing pretty much a solo role. She's taking a throw here. Scored 13 goals. The second uh, leading goal scorer. Thompson leading goal scorer with 14. Cleared by Harris. Bit of a scuffle in midfield. Coughlin and McKeever, the two, uh, the two captains. Ball. Good ball inside, but uh, lost there by Olivia Brown. And now Bohunt with a three on three, and nobody's chasing back here for St. Peter's. This is an opportunity here for Bohunt. Okay. They've left it, they're happy with leaving it as a three on three. And uh, that'll go for a goal kick. So, yeah, I think, well, you know, this is a. I wonder if a few of the players are just starting to tire a little bit. We're getting into the, well, minute to go in the first half. It's interesting to see that uh, some of the Solihull midfield, uh, the St. Peter's midfield, just just watching that uh, attack progress. Short short goal kick goes to McLaughlin. She takes a challenge from behind. Oh. Referee gives a free kick. Play advantage Didn't need there. To. Yeah. Cool. She can, ride those, she can ride those challenges. She has done all th this first half. And there was a great advantage to play because three players were out of the, out of yeah. the game there. Absolutely. Look what's happened now. You've got all the players behind you again. Yeah. And they do the same. Played in. McKeever gets the tackle in this time. But St. Peter's... Oh, well done. Oh, well this done. is wonderful skill. Oh, Beth Stevenson, what a run that was. And the hands go to the head. She just, just realises now what maybe could have been. What a brilliant run. There was just great control of the ball. Really nice touch each time. Just enough to take it past one player and another. Superb. Very unlucky. The keeper did well to come out at exactly the right time. Ivan Etz. Time's up on the clock. Here's McLaughlin, long distance. Good block. Oh, that's a pop. Ball's gone loose. It's those, isn't it? Those little ricochets. I think that came. Grace Framer there, looking to get on the end of that. Long kick, and that's offside. Time's up on our clock. I don't think there's been any injuries, so I think we're going to see. Uh, we don't have any goals to review at half time. I might go and get that coffee with milk in, in a second. But, uh, we probably were. Here's McLaughlin, Harris, two standout players, I think, from either team there going head to head. And yeah. Just that reverse ball, uh, doesn't she? Number 10, Elizabeth Sumner. to McLaughlin. McLaughlin oh, has a pot from distance. Good strike. Keeper does well there. Yeah, really good strike. To keep that low and hard. Excellent work. Bit of zip on that ball. But now oh, here's Bohan. 2v2. Oh, too far. It's played too long. Keeper's going to come out. Referee was right on top of that as well. That good must to be see. time up. Not 35 minutes, is it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, there's a possibility that this could be 35 minutes, in which case uh, we do apologise. I think it must um, be. We, it, it's probably one of the bits of information we don't get on our sheet. So, uh, although we've gone red. There's a chance on the left foot this time. Yeah. So we are just checking. We, we believe it must be 35 minutes. Oh, so the sure referee is, would yeah. have definitely blown by now. Yeah. Well, I so think it's uh, uh, on as even. Yeah, it's a good first half, wasn't it, John? It's, it's been entertaining. It has, really entertaining. We thought it would be. We knew it would be. The only thing we uh, have been surprised by is the, is the lack of goals, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. The quality's been there. You know, the, the players that we thought would be influential are influential in this. 
Well, you know, it, it's interesting with football, isn't it? Because, we, you know, we've seen all these different finals. You get to see, like, usually you say at senior level, you know, best defences win tournaments. Germany, best defence. Yeah. If, if yeah. But, um, you know, at, at junior level, that's not always the case. And, and sometimes you can get teams who are just run over teams ragged by scoring goal after goal. Yeah. As we saw Wright Robinson in the last match. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but in this situation, I think, you know, both teams have got fairly disciplined defences. But here's a good play from Mia Thompson. Leading goal scorer for Bohunt. The chance is there. And the goal has been scored for Bohunt. Number nine, Freya Harris has got her name on the board. Brilliant work from Mia Thompson in the build-up. And Bohunt, School of Workingham, take the lead. Yeah, lovely. She's done this a number of occasions. Mia Thompson gone out on the outside. Really decent strike in the end. Because it tests the keeper, it's moving in the air. We talked about this ball, it's quite light, moves about. I don't think there's too much fault for the keeper. I thought it was a started off where I didn't think it was a vicious uh, shot, but I think because of the movement, she did what she did to parry it. And in many ways, unlucky that it fell to the feet of Freya Harris. Oh, here's McLaughlin going all the way through herself. Oh my goodness, what a move that was. <laughs> and uh, Well, the game suddenly sprung to life, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. In the closing seconds of this first half, here you'll see it's it again. again. And she's looked to do this a couple of times. Push it to the side, push and go. Mia Enright should have maybe held her ground a bit, but that's great follow-up work from Freya Harris. Brilliant. And they've caused all sorts of problems, this, this three, this front three of Bohun, Thompson, Stedman and Harris been a real handful for St. Peter's to contend with. So St. Peter's found themselves 1-0 down. Cochrane looking out wide. Well, she's actually having a shot from a crazy distance away. And, uh, you know, the, the match isn't over yet. There's 35 minutes to go. This was the run earlier. Here's McLaughlin. She's taking on players for fun here. Look at nice skills close footwork stepping in and out and well only just well, one roll of the ball away from being here yeah to I mean unleash. she should have she should have gone for the shot when she just had that before she had that final sort of touch and fell over you know she'd got past got into the box and she should have had the shot because there was a there was contact coming in and I think that would have been a penalty no yeah. doubt about it yeah and she tried to have that extra touch and unfortunately ran it too far had come in on the counter. It's dangerous so, again, isn't it? So, yeah, they're looking, they're, they're look free running this. You know, Mia Thompson and uh, Freya Harris, both of them have got pace, both leggy, getting down those wings. And I think uh, St. Peter's holding the high line, uh, having to sprint backwards just to defend their lines. It's Top. difficult for um, Mia Enright's over there on the left of the three at the back. And she needs Beth Stevenson to come over and help her, but she's occupied, as is Olivia Brown alongside her. Those three at the back finding it very difficult against this bow hunt, but there we go. So End of the first half, exciting half that. Half time is covered and uh, yes, Mia Thompson and Freya Harris uh, give themselves a hug as they walk off the pitch, give each other a hug. There's a bit of high-fiving already, it's not over yet girls, there's plenty of action to go. 35 minutes left yet. And half time score here, St. Peter's Roman Catholic School of Solihull, nil. Bowhunt School of Workingham, one. That's uh, why well we've got a penalty challenge. Let's have a quick look at the goal from uh, a couple of different angles here. This is it from the main angle, and here you see the ball winning. Uh, this is Thompson's skill. She wins the ball, and what a lovely run this is. But that's what I'm saying. It's 3v3 at the back. So, of course, Mia Enright can't get any support, and nobody can come out to, to help her. Beth Stevenson normally would, would sort of come out from that middle of the centre-back. Yeah. But there you go. It's, it's exposed, 1v1. As soon as you lunge in there, you're struggling. Really decent shot. Unlucky with the way that it's been parried out. Decent save, but there you go. Freya Harris reeling away in absolute delight. Superb piece of wing play. Really good strike on target from that distance, and that just shows you the importance of getting shots away on target in these games. It really is worth a, sh a, a pop. And there you go, confirmation. The Bowhunt School take a 1-0 lead into the half-time. St. Peter's, well, they'll be having a talk in the dressing room downstairs. How can they turn this around in the second half? Well, we're going to take a quick break here. There's a penalty shootout uh, 
it's, it's hitting the bins rather than hitting the crossbars today for some reason. And uh, yeah, we're going to just have a quick break. Go and grab a cup of coffee. We'll be back in five minutes. So we have got five competitors. You're all going to have one practice shot each.
So welcome back. Teams have had the extended, uh, extended little break. So have we. And uh, a fascinating first half. Just one goal in it. Scored right at the very end by Freya Harris. But uh, match really in the balance here. And I think uh, all to play for, you say, John? Absolutely. Uh, without uh, a question, finely poised. Very difficult to call which way this will end up. Both teams will have confidence that they can win this game from this position. And Peters will believe that they can very much get back in the game. And equally, I think Bohunt will believe they, and rightly, they can go on and score more goals. It's, it's an intriguing contest. Oh, lovely piece of skill there. Peters have uh, scored freely in the previous rounds. So to have been blanked out in the first half is something unusual for them. Well, I never like to say it, but I think without doubt, Olivia McLaughlin is the, is the key to St. Peter's game, you know, and how they're going to win, get back in it or not. Defensively, how Bohunt can withstand her assault. Good cross, save, cross cleared away. Shot. That was from Mia Thompson. She had to deal with it, and she did well. Yeah, she did have to deal with it, didn't she? Because that was going in that far it corner. But in, yeah. We had a perfect view from our angle. In yeah, fact, you get it here as well. This yeah, is I think it's a cross in a way. I'm not sure it's a, a sort of a chip or a, cro a, a shot. Either way, it was probably going to sneak in and had to be dealt with. It had a lot of pace in it. Like it, it was, it's deceiving from us at the angle we saw yeah. it at, but the fact that it, it hit the goalie's hand so quickly, it actually yeah. was hit with real pace from Thompson. We just didn't, didn't get that view there from the, from the camera so well. Free kick now. And Bohan, only three players in the box. They've still got four behind the ball. They put the ball in. Keepers had a little flap at it, but hit fortunate second time around. So that's twice uh, in the first minute that we've seen uh, a direct ball on the goalkeeper. I just wonder whether the coach has maybe instructed his players to uh, be a little bit more direct and uh, try and put a bit of pressure on uh, on Abby John in the St. Peter's goal. Yeah. Oh, mistake, good covering. Fair Harris doing wonderful work there again. Really good run. Olivia McLaughlin squares the ball, gets it across. The referee spotted a foul there on McLaughlin. Yep. There's a replay of that uh, yeah, issue. Just there, just yeah. quarter, just slightly. Yeah, it's a soft one, you would say, isn't it, really? Well, it's it's a very soft one. Uh, I wasn't sure if the referee completely let the play go on with the shot going in on goal, but it was a tame effort. St. Peter's have four in the box here. McLaughlin's uh, putting that in on the goalkeeper, who sh shows a good pair of hands on that one. So St. Peter's certainly putting more players Ooh. up. Than that. Ball's oh, deceived the whole defence there. Yeah. And cleared up there by Mia Enright. Thompson, leading goal scorer. Well, now joint leading goal scorer because Freya Harris has now joined her on 14 goals for a tournament goals for Bohunt. Thompson crosses in. And, uh, <laughs> girl was there again. McLaughlin's right at the back, clearing everything. She's absolutely all over the place. She is. I know. There's uh, a number of players really trying to influence this game. goal in it so there's no panic stations yet I just wonder whether uh, there's certainly a bit of high fiving from the Bohunt players as they were going off and well, there's nothing you need to see more as an opposition player sometimes to motivate you here's a shot from distance yeah. and that was a good shot from Olivia Brown unleashed a left footer yeah Grace Framer was outside I thought 
was going to be screaming from up here in the commentary box, release her, get, pass it out wide, but she, she took it with her left foot and it tested the keeper. It was worth the effort. Here goes Mia McLaughlin again, Olivia McLaughlin. From left back to right wing. And uh, now she's got the ball at the edge of the box and try and have a go on goal. Certainly not shy to have a chance and in the end she's gone down and well, I think she just hurt her ankle there. She went down. Looks like the referee, has he given a free kick for that? I didn't really see a foul. No. I thought it was a, uh, the way she fell was awkward rather than anything else. Yeah, she's, uh, she's getting up. So Peter's had the throw, but Cochran's okay, she's on her feet. I think she's maybe just having a rest because she had just done a crazy run from left back up to right wing. And maybe that was just having a breather. Certainly uh, putting some miles in here. We don't have any of these Opta stats or anything else that they do at the Champions League. You can see exactly how many kilometres everybody's <laughs> run. <laughs> but I would say that uh, the number five for St. Peter's has probably run more than double uh, anybody on that pitch today so far. Yeah, probably further than any player I've seen in these uh, 9v9 games that we've had the fourth game. Three under 12 games. This girls under 13 final. Lucy Ashcroft is coming on for the uh, St. Peter's team. And uh, that's number 10, Elizabeth Sumner, going off. So they seem to be sort of interchanging on a regular basis, number 10 and 11. Number three is currently not on the pitch either, uh, Cara, Cara Butler for St. Peter's. Peter's got, got players up again. They've got numbers up there. Five in the opposition half. Good skills here from Ellie McGrath. Played by Beth Stevenson, who's uh, despite the number eight on her back, is uh, is playing at the back. Nice play for St. Peter's, passing the ball around the back, looking for a different angle. <laughs> oh, nice play here from Olivia Brown. Oh, sorry, Beth Stevenson, excuse me. Back to McLaughlin, who's having a little breather at the back, but give her the ball, and it's, a, it's like an injection of adrenaline into the system. She's off. She's having a little breather there after a couple of uh, recent runs. Yeah, but still frustration shooting from that deeper distance, isn't it? You can sense that. And here's a chance for Bohunt. It's two on two. Freya Harris played the ball across. Mia Thompson, 2 0. Bohunt score a second. And there's players in orange all around the pitch hugging each other. Hint and of offside was there, maybe? Maybe oh, not. It's. Have a look at that again, it's, yeah. It's, it's been given. It's 2 0. And it's a crushing blow for them. Breaks away down the line. Bray Harris, there it is, played across. Thinks she's on side level. I'm sure with Olivia McLaughlin. Lovely finish. And either way, it's 2 0. Is there a way back at all for St. Peter's from here? given there against St. Peter's. And Mia Thompson now is back to being the leading goal scorer for her team, 15 goals to her name. Here's another angle of this. A lovely little touch through, took oh out yeah. two players there, and this was the ball from Harris. And is she offside? Yeah. Ooh, uh, no, I, I think, think she's onside, isn't she? Yeah. Free kick's just gone over the bar, meanwhile. Uh, here's another look. Uh, It's a really good finish, isn't it? It allows yeah. the ball, is patient, allows it to come across her body. That's what I liked. It wasn't snatching at it. Uh. Well, now St. Peter's really have something to do. Excuse me, if you saw a wobble on our camera. Our camera was picking up all John's 
papers. It's getting very windy up here. And we're all having to weight our papers down in the commentary box. Long distance shot from Thompson and you feel that both of them are starting to just uh, relax a little bit here and they're getting another chance. Here's, uh, here's the goal from the other behind angle so you can't judge the replay but yeah as you can see how she takes the shot there. A lovely finish. Nice finish indeed. So the, the Thompson-Harris partnership up front paying dividends. Two goals for Bohunt. Now what can St. Peter's do? I just feel as if they've gone a little bit flat. Well, there's still plenty, plenty of minutes. time. There's still half an hour of this game to go. Yeah. 25 minutes. 25 minutes, plenty of time that they've really got to, I think, commit more people forward. I think they've just got to take the whole game forward to this Bohunt side. Yes, uh, ball was free there. Good one from uh, McLaughlin pulling the ball back in, and it, it was uh, Olivia Brown in the, in the box. Now Bohunt over the top, and here's a chance now. Here's Harris. Goalkeeper does well. Yeah, just she does. Yeah, and Beth Stevenson does really, really well as well. Lovely ball through from Mia Thompson. Fabulous, got it from the goalkeeper, saw the run, put it right in there, perfectly placed with this pitch, just holding up. St. Peter's attacking down the left-hand side. Olivia Brown into Framer. Framer gets a toe poke on it. Just wide. Still plenty of time left, as John said. Still 25 minutes to go on the clock. As a Wind certainly gets up uh, up in the upper rafters. It's not the, the flags are not fluttering at ground level. It's a weird situation, really. Of course, uh, that's a foul. Did you find, John, that all the stadiums you played in, that really the wind didn't affect you on the pitch that much? Uh, the, the stadium. Sometimes, yeah. No, the, the the worst is in a stadium when it is windy down at pitch side, which was relatively often. Yeah. It's just the fact that it swirls around, and you know, often you get caught out with the flight of the ball because it's not just, you know, left to right, one way or the other. It's it's that it swirls around, and you get the gusts. Yeah. Uh, and personally, th there's nothing worse than playing in wind. Yeah. I didn't mind the rain, anything else, but wind hated. Yeah. Just that uncertainty of where it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely tackle there from Mia Thompson, who's uh, possibly on your uh, short list for uh, player of a match, which uh, we'll be doing in 20 minutes or so. Don't worry, John, you've got plenty of time yet. Here's uh, Mia Leonard. Never liked playing on a uh, pitch that was uh, sticky, dry, that, you know, a little bit like this today. It's sometimes yeah. awkward. I mean, I think a lot of credit has got to go to the players. It's lucky we had that downpour. I don't know, an hour or so ago, in yeah. many ways. It just gave a little bit of uh, give on the on the pitch, a little bit of a nice surface. But when it's drying, it, it sort of sticks and holds up. It can be can be awkward to play on. Yeah. yeah we did have a downpour in the previous match, and that really sort of uh, probably much needed. So there's, a, there's still, you feel there's still a bit of zip on that pitch out there. Here's uh, Olivia Brown. Good turn, good move. Oh, yes. Kramer keeps keeps it in. It's just starting to get Enright. just starting to get some tired legs out there. Yeah, I think you're beginning to see now. Oh, from that girl. McLaughlin ends up running in, and that yeah, you, you feel uh, Olivia McLaughlin. You feel that she's just had a breather in the last sort of ten minutes or so. She's just gone out the picture and. Uh, she's getting a talking to by the referee for well <laughs> she just ran into the <laughs> there you go yeah that was a foul fair enough substitute going on down down below us number eight molly steadman is back on and it's number two kayla weir just goes off to have a little rest that's a, that's a difficult ball to deal with st peter's but they manage it First signs of a little bit of despondency, I think. 
in the St. Peter's team. Yeah. They've got to renew their energy. They need a goal. If they score a goal, it'll really pick them up. I know it will. And it'll ask questions of this Bohunt school. Yeah. It really is. They have to be the next scorer. I think if Bohunt score again, then that's, that's completely game, set, and match to them. Yeah. But if St. Peter's can find a way through, it's all to play for still. It's definitely very important though, I totally agree. St. Peter's need to score in probably the next 10 minutes or so. Still plenty of time on the clock. Uh, I don't feel there's anything between these teams at all. Number 10. Mackenzie Glover there. There's some of our fans. Made their way. I'm disappointed none of them were doing the floss there. So. That's why I'm uh, just standing up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Here's an opportunity. Neve Holland, who's, uh, well, she's wearing the number two, but she's pretty much staying up front now. So there's yeah. definitely been a change around in the St. Peter's team. And uh, looks like they've. Neve Holland is, is certainly staying up front now all the way through. She's going to be the uh, straight centre forward. Here's McLaughlin. Tackled by Leonard. Great to hear a very active crowd down below and enjoying themselves. I think the MCs are feeling a bit tired as well. It's the first time I'm actually hearing a little bit of quiet down there, which is, I must say, is a relief to my ears sometimes. Uh, I think it's a relief to everybody's ears around here. I mean, they've been brilliant. And there's an amazing fantastic. atmosphere in here. I think everybody unanimously just appreciates the, the clackers that are all handed out to everybody, the guns that fire off the T-shirts, the, <laughs> the decibel level that we've got a, an official monitor for that we're going to see who's the, the loudest crowd that we've got. They'll receive a PlayStation 4 for the school. They've got player of the match to do. I know that's going to be yeah. thought that's about to come. in a minute. Here's, here's a nomination from St. Peter's <laughs> McLaughlin. She's gone past two players there. What a ball. That is inside. Onside. Keeper saves. And what a chance that was for St. Peter's to get on the scoreboard. Well, Eve Annett deserves huge credit here because she comes out brilliantly. Clocking again, showing just what she's all about. What a run, what a release, that's better. Just that touch slightly far, but you've got to give huge credit to the keeper coming off the line so quickly. Yeah, yeah. and it does brilliantly there. And uh, certainly... Well, I think that keeps the, her team right in with a shout of winning this game. Kramer losing I out. I think it would have been very different had she not. Oh, a lovely touch. Just feel there's a little bit more energy in the St. Peter's team again. Well, it's good. I think they know they've got to. They've got nothing to lose. You know, throw caution to the wind. You know, they may well concede a third goal. That's going to be the, the real harsh thing that happens is as they're pushing forward like this, which they've got to, they super. concede a third goal. But if it's better to have tried and failed than failed to have tried, eh? Yeah. I like that phrase. Thank you. Oh, what a pearl of wisdom. It's not mine. <laughs> There's the famous one from uh, um, Del Piero, isn't it? Who said, uh, you know, you, you, you fail to score in 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah. <laughs> Very similar. Well, this match is just, you're just feeling that St. Peter's, have, they've had a little rest. And uh, you feel that there's now, they've regrouped and they're now pushing. And certainly we just saw probably the, the chance of the match. Great save from uh, the Bohunt's goalkeeper. Yeah, it was brilliant. Now Bohunt's always a danger on the counter. All the players, every single player is in the Bohunt half. So how much pressure is that at the moment? But well, how the vulnerable are they? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Only needs one misplaced pass and Bohan could go 2-0 up. Well, you want to see a goal, don't game. you? you it, it, they deserve a goal. There's no doubt about it, St. Peter's. The effort they've put into this game, 
I feel they deserve to make this a real contest. That's a free kick. Oh, McLaughlin's down. Here's a chance. She's very feisty as well, isn't she? I like it. <laughs> no, I like it's it. But she's, ha I mean, she's been having a running conversation with the referee. He's been sort of, you know, just having a word, trying to settle her, calm her. I think he knows and admires the tenacity that she shows. There yeah, they are again. A smile on the face. Yeah, you know, he's enjoying uh, himself. He is because he recognises how committed she is. It's it's great to see. Oh, here she's we go. loving the game. She's she's placed the ball. Here we she, go. And she's playing on the edge, and she wants to get her team, drag her team back into this game. There is no doubt this is a shot, and the <laughs> question is, will she score? And can St Peter's get back into this match? Big moment here in this game. Olivia McLaughlin steps up. Oh, hits it with pace through the wall and straight at the goalkeeper. I think that went straight through the wall. There's a shot oh. on the left foot, and it's a goal for St. Peter's. And it's that girl again, Olivia McLaughlin, with the left foot this time. Oh, my goodness. Well, she didn't score with a free kick, but she scored with a follow up. And St. Peter's are back in this match. 2 1. Oh, wow. Well, does so well. Here, left foot. Keeper can do nothing about it. And that is all about her resilience, her determination, her focus and drive and desire to drag her team back into it. Just talking about her. And, well, they deserve it and she deserves it. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. I think. Uh, well, now we've got game on. Still plenty of time to go. Still 25 minutes to play. And I think, you know, I think we both feel, we're both fair. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yes, 15 minutes to play, apologies. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're, we're both um, sort of independent commentators here. But at the end of the day, you know, St. Peter's have not deserved to be 2 0 down. This is, you know, they, they deserve to be on it. Here's a goal again. And uh, it was interesting, her, the free kick from McCoughlin with, with McCoughlin with her right foot, straight to the wall, the goalkeeper managed to get a hand on it, and then this was the shot with the left. Oh, and, and, yeah, and she's coming through here again. Here's another counter-attack. So Peter's really on a high at the moment. Well, that's what's going to be interesting now, isn't it, to see how Bo Hunt react. Yeah. Because they're going to be absolutely panicked every time that Olivia McLaughlin gets the ball, because it's not that she's... Uh, She's been doing this the entire game. She's making things happening. She's, the players react around her. They're pushing people forward because they're feeling the enthusiasm and the drive that she's gotten. It's exactly what a uh, captain should do. Number three is coming on, and number 11 is going off here. So that's uh, Lucy Ashcroft is off, and Kyra Butler is on for St. Peter's. But, uh, well, we've really got a game on here, and this will be a corner. Oh, foul throw, the referee says. Frustrating, so isn't it? You don't want to yeah. give possession away cheaply. Oh, you know, forgot we, that could have been a corner, could it? <laughs> well, no, the ball that went through and out, and yeah. I'm not sure, but either way, you've lost possession. The impetus goes a bit. Well, there's no doubt, I think the last 10 minutes, and Peters have really bossed things, but there's always that danger of uh, Bohem's on the counter attack. But at the moment, they're not even able to get a counter-attack. They just can't get hold of the ball. They're just clearing, and St. Peter's are putting more pressure on. Here's uh, Cara Butler, who's just come on herself. Definitely, yeah. Sorry, uh, the St. Peter's uh, players do not want to be passing it back. They're the referee's going to give a free kick, and there's a player down at the moment. Actually, yeah, not looking in a good way at all. No. Um, down to the left side, so we'll, we'll just leave that for a second sure what happened there. Oh, they're, nice. they're happy to be on the big screen, aren't they there? <laughs> Those supporters. Not sure who's down there at the moment, but you can just see on the left-hand side, we've got a player who's uh, down. Just trying to look, see uh, who it can be. Yeah, it's it it's number five. It's Olivia, Olivia McLaughlin, McLaughlin herself. Yeah, just scored a great goal, and now she's... Uh, down. Got one more final to come here today. This is uh, final number four out of five. And then not only, a, only a matter of another ten in the next two days. We've got uh, 
Mr. Clive Tilsley is going to come and uh, grace the commentary box for a couple of matches on Wednesday. So it'd be nice for you to work with a professional for a change, John. Here's the uh, here's what happened. Oh, she goes down and it's that left ankle. Now she had an issue with that earlier, where she was feeling the left ankle, and it looks like she's been carrying it and maybe put a bit of bit of weight on that again. Yeah, that didn't look nice at all. Yeah. So the uh, the final match coming up next it's uh, Fottersham Village College, Cambridgeshire against Stanley Park High School from Sutton. Now she's she's up, but that left ankle, <laughs> you can hear the crowd cheering. They, they know how important she is to the team. Well, the face is going to say all oh, as she puts weight on it. And it's one of these. She's going to have to try and run it off. If she comes off, then she's not going to go back on. <laughs> I can't she imagine for a minute she's going to come off. No, she's not that sort of girl, is she? No, she's not. But she's going to get patched up. Yeah. And the team's 2-1 down. I think that's, I think, the conversation going on. Look, you have really hurt your foot. This is a once-in-a-season moment. She shouldn't be on there. She probably should come off. She probably will come off, to be honest, in a, in a, a few minutes. I don't think she'll come off straight away. She'll want to... No, they're, they're begging her to come off. And yeah. She can't carry on with that. Well, that's a blow for St. Peter's, for sure. So it's a massive blow for them. Quite possibly any chance they've got of getting back on level terms. You've got to be honest about it. Bitterly disappointing for her if she can't play any further part. Well, it might be one of those, you know, that sometimes uh, give it a couple of minutes and it, your body just sort of uh, just gets back. We will well see if she gets back on yeah. the pitch. We'll keep an eye out for that for sure. Yeah, I hope so with some water. You know, with the adrenaline that pumps through you. I've done it many, many times. <laughs> Can't walk the next day, but I tell you, with the adrenaline pumping in a final. Yeah. And here she comes, bless her. Yeah, give it a try, yeah. This is, this is a player who scored 26 goals out of the 31 that St. Peter's have scored. So she's that important. Let's see what happens. I'll keep an eye on her in the next five minutes or so. But meanwhile, Bohunt, 10 minutes on the clock, but we just lost three minutes at least there injury time so there's gonna be a, a little bit of added here Bo had to look like they're lining up a sub but they've started to just wait for this free kick Long distance shot well if you're the coach for Bohan you'd be <laughs> pulling your hair out of that sort of thing you got four players up surely you're gonna put it in the mix and uh, another chance just, just kicked out over the bar. Just uh, <laughs> Mia, Mia Thompson's, you know, leading goal scorer. She's obviously scored a few of those, but um, it looks like Olivia McLaughlin's going to take this goal kick. Well, that's a bit silly. She's isn't made it? a stone stuff. Surely one of the other yeah. players that's that she, bit, she can't even silly. walk. Right. Oh, she can't take this kick. Surely she's going to put all the pressure on the left ankle. No way. Well, somehow she manages it, but that is only going to cause more damage. Um, here we go. Oh my goodness, she's got the ball at her feet and it's like she's she's brand new. Here we go. Crowd are getting behind her. Her ankle is definitely not in a good state. And here comes Mia Leonard on left back. St. Peter's want to build it up on the right. Carver Butler. Is a Kramer. Ball's just hanging on the edge of the box. Keep it as well and comes out. St. Peter's. Bohan just can't get hold of the ball. You know, if you look at the stats, I think St. Peter's have had the ball constantly. And the referee's given a free kick there to St. Peter's. Yeah. And uh, just seeing the coaching staff, so. Uh, Olivia McLaughlin has just been told to go and play up front. She's obviously well, they're begging really her walk. to go up there because there's no point of being at the back. She can't, you know, she's not yeah. going to influence the game really from the back line. No. She can influence the game in the small part that she can play in this game now because of her ankle in the last third. So she just has to gamble. Yeah, that's what they've got left here. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's what they're saying to her. 
Well, time is coming up, John, and I'm going to be asking you to call the player of the match at some stage. I know we've, we've spoken about one particular player a hell of a lot in this game. Um, there are obviously a lot of other players here who've, who've uh, made an infringement. Of course, Mia Thompson and uh, Freya Harris have both been superb. They just don't seem to have had a lot of the ball. That's the, that's the, that's the crazy thing. But here's Mia Thompson again. When they have had the ball, they've been very dangerous. Yeah, it's very difficult to pick a, a player of the match. I mean, here's McLaughlin looking through. Oh, she's gone round another one. What a move this is! Incredible! Saved by the keeper. Chance! Oh, and Frame has put it over. Oh, oh. unbelievable skills. I mean, it is unbelievable. Well, I've got to see this again. Look at this play from McLaughlin. She's going around players as if they're static. What a turn inside. And the shot on goal. Great save from the what keeper. A save. And Framer. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, John, I'll hand the stage over to you. Well, it's, uh, it's going to have to take me a, a minute or so to explain the man of the match, uh, player of the match, sorry. Very, very difficult. When I look down the list and I see Freya Harris and Mia Thompson. The work that they've done has been really, really good. Got to say, Eve Anets in goal has kept them in oh. the tie. She really has. I think if they go on and win this game, Bohun, I think a lot, a lot comes down to Eve Anets. Yeah. I think everybody's got to agree with me that there can only be one player of the match, and that's that girl there in shot, Olivia McLaughlin. She is my player of the match. She's given everything. She's shown enormous, enormous uh, courage, drive and desire. Above all, it, it just immense skill. She's a very skillful, she's a lovely player to watch. Really, really one of those performances that you can have glory and failure if, if it stays this way. Yes. And I think, you know, that's such a good, good, you know, thing to learn for everybody watching and these players around, she's inspired her teammates. She's meant that they just could not relax Bohunt for one minute. She's driven on her players around her, which is exactly what a captain should do. I mean, I can't give her enough credit for uh, for that. No. Well, I think St. Peter's, have, I've got it all to do now. So uh, Olivia McLaughlin, our player of the match. Still St. Hot. Peter's. And I will say, and I didn't tell you this, but up to two years ago, she was my next door neighbor. And so I've watched her as a Are young you kid. Are you serious? And she plays football every night with all her older brothers and uh, has been an amazing talent. And uh, I've watched her grow up. She's a bigger girl now than she was. Wow. She was a lovely little cutie. Yeah. She's lost that kid phase and now she's uh, into her teenage years. But um, oh, she's yes, a tough, tough she, cookie. She's an amazing kid. And uh, I was speaking to her parents just before the match. They're, they're here. They're thrilled that she's got through. And uh, she's, a, she's a talented kid. I didn't know she was this good. I knew she was good. But uh, I didn't know she was this good. And uh, well, congratulations, Livy. You've earned your PlayStation. <laughs> oh, no doubt about that. Uh, and the question is, she's now up front. Every time she touches the ball, it looks like something's going to happen. And we've five minutes to go. I think they'd write a Hollywood film if uh, if she gets the team back in this and they go on to win it. I think <laughs> it's a Hollywood script. It is. Well, it's uh, incredible. And she, you know, and she's I, I don't want to take anything away. It's not, you know, it's not the, yeah. the Olivia McLaughlin show. Flip me, yeah. it sounds like it at times. But listen, you know, Bohunt have, have played very, very well. Yeah. They, they have been, uh, I suppose, in, in many ways, in control since they scored that second goal. Yes, they can see yes. that, that goal to get them back. 2-1. Here's Harris. Harris has managed to nick the ball, but it just goes out. But, but the story clearly has been about could St. Peter's come back. And it's made it such drama. I mean, the crowd down here are loving it. Yeah. You know? They could eat could quite easily. This team, St. Peter's, could eat quite, quite easily have rolled over, just conceded that the game was gone, it was lost. There's a minute and a half left. Can they get an equaliser? There's still yeah. time for an equaliser. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the great thing about this game. Probably two or three minutes injury time as well. Yeah. So and It should be. So, yeah, plenty of time to go. And the St. Peter's coaches are encouraging their team to get up front. They, they're they happy to go two on two at the back, and they're, they're telling their players to push up. Well, I think there's just a signal from the referee 
that there's probably three or four minutes extra time. Was that the signal that he was giving yeah. to the bench? Possibly, because there was a sort of a renewed encouragement to the side that the coaches realized there's plenty of time still. Here's Framer. Don't look at the clock and think time's up. There's plenty of time. Framer had that uh, great chance to actually get equal just earlier. Should be pushing everything on. Here's a flick on. It's gone the wrong way for Bohun. They just need to clear their lines and try and get a breather. And the coaches are retrieving the ball. Don't know how long it's been given. I think I've seen a signal four minutes. Four minutes. It was four minutes, yeah. Four minutes has been signaled to the coaches. We don't seem to have the board being used for that. But four minutes has been called. And we are now in the first minute very shortly. We do feel that uh, St. Peter's could so, so easily. Oh, that was this. lucky, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> went out because they're away. I think it was, yeah, it was Freya Harris who was off. Four minutes to go. So Bohunt will be very happy just to see He'll that take ball that time, yep. go out. Well, I've really, uh, as I said, I've really enjoyed Mia Thompson and Freya Harris as a partnership up front. Yeah, they just good, haven't had it? enough of the ball. It's been, w considering they've scored a goal each as well, they yep. really have been starved of the ball. Yeah, they have. For so long. They have. They've had to get back and do their duties, haven't they? Great defence there. McLaughlin's down again, that left ankle. She's pain, playing through the pain barrier here. Ella McGrath is going to take the throw. St. Peter's have got everybody up bar one now. Well, this is a final opportunity. Ball's broken loose. Bev Stevenson. Oh. Well, this could go anywhere. Oh. That's a corner, come on. Eve Holland and a corner. And they're sprinting to take the corner. And Bohan hanging on by the fingernails here. Well, there's gonna, they're going to be so Keepers relieved. Up. <laughs> here comes the keeper. Go on. Everybody's up. Go for it. Oh. Corner's not too bad, but it's broken out by the first player. Oh, oh no one touched too nope. many. Yeah. It's corner. It's got to be a corner. It's going to be a corner. It's another corner. Be they left it as if they thought it was a goal kick. But we all saw the click, and everybody's going up here. The goal is up. Well, I don't know if we can get a wide shot from our main camera, but there is nobody, virtually everybody is inside that penalty box now. And the corner is poor. Another St. Peter's throw. Coaches are falling over <laughs> themselves trying to get the ball. <laughs> we nearly saw a fumble. <laughs> They're actually trying to tackle each other, get the ball there. It's better than Here's McLaughlin on her own. She's got players around her. Goalkeeper's still well out of her goal. McLaughlin wins the ball back. Here's Holland. Holland releases Ooh, the shot. That was a chance as well. The ball dribbles wide. Yeah. She's distraught. Oh, she's yeah. She can hardly walk. <laughs> she's going to be feeling in so much pain later. She's almost in tears from a pain of ankle. Like what a this girl is hard as nails. And uh, the relief on Bon Hunt, uh, Bo Hunt School. If they uh, hear that whistle, they are just willing and willing and willing. Yeah. This minute and a half to finish. The referee to blow the whistle. The tension on the sidelines is just <laughs> palpable. I mean, <laughs> look at the benches. The benches are going crazy. The, I mean, the technical area was discarded. I don't know how long ago. It's just look. There he is. The effort he's put on to retrieve the ball. <laughs> they are pushing so hard. Literally a minute or two left to go. St. Peter's surrounding the box. Very compressed game here, and oh, here's a here chance now for Bohan. Offside. No, she's not. No, no offside given. He's going to have to go back to the goalie, and that's going to sort suit Bohan out. The full time whistle has gone. Well, what a game that is. <laughs> Bohan have taken the under 13 Schools Cup for Girls in a thoroughly entertaining match. What a game it was. St. Peter's were superb. But two goals from Bohan. Either side of half time has given them the trophy here. Players are distraught on the ground. And well, it's lovely to see some great sportsmanship out there as well from the Bohan players. There's 
There's plenty of tears out there. Tears of happiness and sadness as well. Well, if ever you want an advert for girls football, there it is. What a, in any form of the game, that is as thoroughly entertaining as it gets. Dramatic. And huge credit to the players out there. Absolutely Amazing incredible. performance. Bohunt did well under, under the most enormous of pressure. The relief on every single one of those players' faces tells its own story. How, how much pressure they were put under by this resilient and brave and bold St. Peter's side. So full credit to them. Brilliant from Bohunt. Worthy champions. Two great goals from Freya Harris. Thompson as part of that three up front with Molly Stedman. I thought the first half they were excellent. Second half, Olivia McLaughlin got her goal she deserved. Got it back to within a goal. I think it was just too, too little, too late. They weren't able to find that second, an equaliser. Well, Bohunt oh. have taken this two goals to go on. Let's have a quick look at the goals. And what a match this was. Here we are, uh, just before half time here, as you can see on the clock, 33 minutes. Great skills here from Mia Thompson. Yeah, Mia Thompson, brilliant. Gets the shot away. But look at the way that Freya Harris follows it up. You know, that's real centre forwards play. You'll see it again here. Number four, find it difficult, Mia Enright, many, many times. Tries to put the foot in, get the tackle in. Beth Stevenson, Ella McGrath couldn't come across. They were occupied, 3v3. But superb following play. You watch it again. Look at Freya Harris in the middle of the box. There, she's the first to react. Off the rebound, gets the touch and then follows up again. Gives the keeper no chance. Second one, lovely touch inside. Real composure to go through the two players. That was excellent play. And you can see over here on this near side, Mia Thompson with an emphatic finish. She's just patient enough here. Lovely touch through the two players. Brilliant. Releases the ball. And this is all about timing of the pass. And then allowing the ball to come in and across her on this sticky surface. That needed the patience. Lovely. Kayla Weir deserves enormous credit for the way she broke through from defence. And at 2-0, you think, well, that's it. There's only going to be another goal scorer from Bo Hunt. Surely that was going to put the game beyond St. Peter's grasp. There it was, Olivia McLaughlin with the first. Here she is. She gets the second. Look at the way she holds off the challenge. Absolutely determined to get the shot in, to drag her team back into it. Right foot strike. Comes back. Frustrated it's gone past her. Uh, good work. But then it's here there to hold off the challenge and then with the other foot the left foot the weaker foot the foot that's ended up which can hardly put any weight on at all from later on that Eve Anitz I think deserves enormous yeah. credit and yeah. to be fair she would have been my player of the g match had it not been for Olivia McLaughlin's outstanding display of not just what a good player she is but everything else about her courage and leadership today. So, fantastic day, enjoyed that. What a thoroughly entertaining match, and I, you know, me and you, you have seen quite a few games, John. I've not always commentated on them, I've been behind the scenes, but that's gotta be in one of my top three matches I think I've, I've covered with uh, the England Schools FA over the past four or five years. Absolutely, thoroughly thrilling match. And uh, well, we're gonna take the presentation and then uh, I'm gonna pop down and uh, have a few words back shortly.
Well, what an incredible match that was. And myself and John Scales were up in the commentary box. We were saying it was one of the best games we've seen here for many years. Um, we felt exhausted commentating on it. I bet you guys, you were running around, tripping over each other and everything around here. Just give me your emotion after that final. So no, it's just one of them. We thought we were going to get over the line, but our chances didn't fall to the 
potentially the players that we wanted them to fall to. But we've been on an incredible journey from St. Peter's up into Liverpool, Nottingham, and it's just been a fantastic day and a fantastic experience. And can't thank you guys enough, really. Yeah. And, you know, you've had great support here. They're all getting back on the coaches now. But hello and parents as well, having a great time. Um, just looking through, like, it's, it's amazing, like, you know, me and John go back a, a little bit. We're over, over 50 now and everything. And we were saying one of the incredible things looking at the list is how many rounds of competitions. This is girls football. It could have been 10 years ago. This competition would only have maybe three rounds or four. You've had te there's 10 rounds in this. So it must be fantastic just for girls football. What we've just seen there is a schools match, not a county match, a high level schools match. That personally, you know, as a, as a woman yourself, you must feel great seeing that and representing girls football in such a way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the girls will play outside um, of school and they're so committed and it's great to see girls football coming on. Uh, but that wouldn't be possible without parents. So thank you so much to all the parents that come every single game and do the training. So well done and unlucky, St. Peter's. Yeah, and, and final question as well. You know, in terms of the match itself, you know, you had Olivia McLaughlin, who was absolutely phenomenal today. Like, we looked at the, the, the stats. She scored 26 out of 31 goals. So we could tell that she was possibly somebody who would be the danger person for your team. Unfortunately, she, she got the injury, but she was still playing through it. And, uh, you know, but the, the team as a whole, what a great bunch of girls you have. Uh, they were absolutely fantastic. And uh, I thought Abby had a tremendous game of goals. She kept us in in the first half. And uh, just one of those things, an incredible game. And congratulations to Bo Hunt. Uh, Mary enjoyed the celebrations. But we're really, really proud of the girls. Obviously, we're disappointed. But um, we've been all over the country. And it's been a great experience for them. And to play here today has just been amazing. Um, and, you know, we are disappointed. But we'll take it on to next year and hopefully we'll be back again. Yeah. And the important thing is you've been part of one of the biggest, best matches we've seen here. So you can certainly hold your head up. And, uh, you know, safe journey back to Sahil, guys. Thank you, Thank you very much. So with me, I've got Matt Holland, who's head of PE, and Andy Campbell, who's the manager of the team. Um, I'm exhausted after that match. I bet you guys are. That, what a game that was. Heart in my mouth throughout the entire game. I've been nervous since I woke up this morning. Uh, said to the head who's in the stand with us today, um, my heart was racing at about 9 a.m. Uh, so I'm glad it's done. Couldn't be prouder of the girls today and for the entire season. They've been fantastic. Yeah. And you've got a great team out there. You know, they, you were under the cosh for long periods. You know, St. Peter's in midfield is absolutely incredibly strong. But, you know, to score the goals and, and the girls up front, you know, they, they were high up on the list for the player of the match, to be honest. They didn't have much ball, but the ball they did have, they did something with. And it, it, how did you see the match? Yeah, I felt like the first got kind of five, ten minutes, we were the better side. Uh, and then there was a bit of a phase in the game where they kind of had a bit more of the play. And then at the start of the second half, we came out strong, got the second goal. And then we kind of did have our back against the wall the last kind of 15, 20 minutes. So the girls stayed together um, and they obviously, I, I, fully, I think they deserved the victory overall. Well, you haven't got far to go back, but, you know, going back home, you, you must be so thrilled to be part of what was an absolutely one of the classic finals we've seen here. Yeah, it was an amazing final. I think, I think both teams played some really good football and I think it shows how far girls football has come in the last few years to see such an even game uh, and see some fantastic players on the pitch. I thought their, their number five was superb uh, but we had a game plan to kind of stop her. We, we, we knew that she was their threat um, but they, they were a good team overall but we did our job today and I'm, I'm really proud of them. Finally, how do you bring the girls down after that when they go do PE tomorrow morning or whenever you do PE at the school and they've co they come with the cup, how do you actually bring them down to earth? Why bring them down? Don't need to. <laughs> Leave them up there and build for next season. Okay. Well, guys, safe journey home. Girls, well done. You're the champions. Woohoo!